Howdy students, this is going to be our last section, so this will be 13.4, and we're going to cover a few things today. We're going to cover entropy, enthalpy, which should sound familiar, and Gibbs free energy. So we're looking at three different variables today, and they're actually all going to be interconnected. Entropy is going to be delta S, entropy, uh, excuse me, enthalpy is a delta H, and then this Gibbs free energy is actually a delta G. So we're going to be looking at how do we know if reactions occur or if reactions don't occur because not everything reacts together. Some things do, some things don't. But we can actually mathematically prove whether something's going to happen based on the energy values for the chemical species that are involved. So let's get to it. A spontaneous process is going to occur without outside intervention. If it's spontaneous and we classify it as spontaneous, it's going to happen on its own. We don't have to give it a push. We don't have to add any extra energy. Now, it can be fast or it can be slow. I think of spontaneous combustion. Certain things will combust on their own, and that's a very fast process. Some things like rusting happens very slow. So if we go through a spontaneous change, we will go through something called entropy most of the time. So the first thing we're going to talk about is entropy. It's the letter S, and usually it's a capital S. It's a measure of randomness or disorder. A lot of people use the word chaos. So you guys, some of you, may have messy rooms. So today when you go home after watching this video, you are going to tell your parents that you're just observing entropy which is chaos and disorder. And then your parents will tell you to go clean up your room and you will do so and say, yes, sir. And yes, ma'am. But entropy is disorder. So the universe is constantly increasing in entropy. We understand that the universe is expanding. And with that, things are spreading out. There's more chaos and more randomness as time passes. So what is disorder? Well, disorder can be lots of things. It can be an example like we just showed you of your room. Uh, but specifically in chemistry, disorder can be um, the molecules spreading out, getting more messy, if you will. So because entropy is a measure of randomness and disorder, there's a few things that we need to understand. It's associated with probability. There's more ways for something to get disorganized than there is to be organized, which makes sense if you think about it. Over time, things tend to get messy. It takes energy to get them back to being organized. Entropy increases if we go from a solid to a liquid to a gas because the molecules begin to get a little more messy. They get spread out. The energy increases. They don't want to be orderly. If you have a greater amount of entropy or if we have increasing entropy, this is going to be a positive value. If entropy uh, increases when solutions are formed, that's because the molecules are being dissolved. We're forming ions. The molecules are spreading out. Entropy increases in a reaction when more atoms or molecules are formed. So if we start with one chemical and it busts apart into several chemicals, entropy increases. The entropy of a substance increases with temperature. So if we add heat, we tend to increase the disorder, the entropy. So the picture down here, we show an ice cube going from a solid to a liquid. And chances are we had to go through a change in temperature. We had to add heat. So this is a positive value for the change in entropy. Now, in any spontaneous process, there's always an increase in the entropy of the universe. The energy of the universe is constant, but the entropy of the universe is increasing. So I'm going to say that again. The energy of the universe is constant. Energy is neither created nor destroyed. However, entropy is constantly increasing. Remember that we calculate the change in enthalpy by subtracting the reactants value from the products. So we're kind of talking about this new letter, delta H, which we've seen before. And delta H we can get from products minus reactants. Usually we are given the values in kilojoules over moles. Remember that the enthalpy of a free element in its standard state is zero. 
Things like oxygen gas, nitrogen gas, magnesium as a solid. So here's the reaction. This is called a sigma, which means a summation. We are going to add all of the energies of the products and subtract all of the energies of the reactants. So first, we're going to calculate the change in enthalpy for this particular reaction with hydrogen and oxygen. And we're given the values for the delta H. So products minus reactants when we are solving for delta H, P minus R. Our products are here, 2 times H2O. And then we're going to subtract 2 times the hydrogen, and we have 1 oxygen. And both of those are 0. Final answer here, negative 571.6 kilojoules. And it should actually be per 1 mole is implied here. Now, if it was 2 moles for the reaction, we would double that. Gibbs free energy has to do with that word I was talking about at the beginning of spontaneity, being spontaneous. So Gibbs free energy is the energy available to do work. We're going to use delta G, a change in Gibbs free energy is the standard free energy change. The change in free energy occurs if the reactants in their standard states are converted to products in their standard states. A lot of wording. We have an equation that is associated with this, and it's right here. Delta G, the free energy, is equivalent to what we calculated in the last slide, enthalpy, minus the temperature times the change in entropy. So if we give you values for each of these variables, you could calculate the free energy and thus tell us if a reaction is spontaneous or if it is not spontaneous. So a spontaneous reaction has a negative delta G. So if we have a negative value for delta G, the reaction is going to occur on its own. So for example, when ice melts, delta H gives us a positive value, which is endothermic, and the in, uh, entropy is a positive value, and delta G is zero at zero degrees Celsius. We have some situations where entropy and enthalpy can be either positive or negative, and what we want you to understand is if that is going to result in a spontaneous reaction or a non-spontaneous reaction. So if delta S is positive and H is positive, we will have a spontaneous reaction only at high temperatures. If S is negative and S is positive, it will never be spontaneous. And let me show you why up here. If we have a positive value for H and we subtract by the temperature times a negative value, we will have a positive value plus a positive number. When we subtract by a negative, we're adding. So no matter what the scenario is, delta G will always be positive. So this is an always situation. Now, if S is positive and H is negative, it will always be spontaneous. Let me show you why. Delta G, if we take a negative temperature and we subtract by temperature times a positive number for the entropy, 
we'll be taking a negative value and subtracting more, which will always make it more negative. So this is an always situation as well. Now if S is negative and H is also negative, this is going to be spontaneous, but only at low temperatures.